Byzantium stands on the crossroads of Europe, Asia, and Africa. A prophetic dream led the Emperor Constantine to found the city, which is a center of culture, commerce, and diplomacy. land to become an empire. It requires the strength and courage of one willing to take charge of perhaps the most vibrant city in the world. Welcome everybody to the beginning of my brand new let's play on in the name of Jerusalem to a complete overhaul mod for Mountain Blade 2 of Bannerlord that brings the third crusade to life. It has a completely new custom map that is much larger than the vanilla Bannerlord, several brand new factions, hundreds of armors, tons of custom scenes, civilian clothing, as well as a bunch of other really fun mechanics both in the campaign map and and in battle. The mod unfortunately as of right now is not released to the public however you can see they are making great progress on this epic overhaul and are of course edging ever so closer to that full release. So I'll make sure to leave a link to their discord down below in the description that's one of the best places to keep up to date with it and of course make sure you subscribe to the channel because when this mod does get released I'll be one of the first to let you know. And then finally I'll make sure that I go ahead and leave the link to the entire playlist of this series down below in the description so you can check it out from start to finish there if you're watching this in the future. Oh uh, yeah, here is also a glimpse of my mod list as well for those of you who are interested in the other mods I'm using in this series. Nothing too fancy because this mod hasn't had a lot of compatibility with other stuff, but still I think a good array of stuff that should make this campaign even better. And as you can see, and as you've probably guessed from the intro, there are plenty of factions currently in the mod, each with their own unique abilities, cool artwork, and plenty more. However, the faction we're going to be playing is of course going to be the Romans, the Byzantines. They start in such a precarious spot. They are one of the largest empires next to the Seljuks and of course Saladin. However, unlike Saladin, we are being attacked on every single front that is going to make our lives 10 times harder. We do get some bonuses to help alongside that. We do get Barbarian Swords, so our recruitment of all cost related to mercenaries is reduced by 25%. This is going to be mercenary clans alongside mercenaries from taverns. We also have good logistics so our food and water consumption is going to be reduced by 10%. Nothing major, but always nice. The biggest thing here, though, is strongholds. Enemy siege preparation speed will be reduced by 10%. Already, they've made sieges take much longer, so you're going to have to have a pretty decent army, well-supplied food. But because we have such a vast empire, being able to make it from one side to the other and obviously stop these sieges, this 10% is going to be very nice. And then finally, we also get a little bit of a security increase in our kingdom, so when we take new castles, they're going to be less likely to actually rebel. However, we do get a, de a, de a decrease in our taxes and also soldier wages, and our armies break uh, apart a lot quicker and actually cost more to form. So there's some good negatives there sorry good positives but also quite a few negatives okay i think this looks like a man who is ready to go and defend the byzantine empire keep rome going one last time they also added in some cool new flags as well they're, they're kind of adding to this as they go but of course we have to go ahead and take this one because of the name of it i won't say it because i don't get demonetized but here we go looking absolutely beautiful uh yeah definitely a good sign and again we have to have the byzantine purple even though i believe the byzantines in the campaign are aren't actually purple it still looks great and here we go so on the first day of summer in 1187 we have joined the roman empire we are here pledging my allegiance to say my father passed away and i have inherited this castle to do what i must to defend the glory of Rome. So if we dive into it, and if you guys don't know, in this mod, you do start off as a lord, so you kind of do miss out on that wandering stage, which is always really fun. However, starting off as a lord does also have its bonuses. And as you can see, as we zoom out, the map itself 
is huge. There is so much going on, but also like there's a lot of stuff that's very compacted. For example, if we go over to the, you know, to Jerusalem itself and go down here, there is a lot of castles and cities next to each other, which makes it much easier for the AI to kind of understand what's going on. They can actually go to these settlements and siege. I've actually not seen the AI really get lost in this one, so it does definitely promote a very, very fun bit of gameplay. There's islands as well that you can go to and conquer and start your own kingdom if you really must. And then and finally, we also have uh, Egypt as well, which I think is one of the best looking parts of the map. You've got the pyramids, lots of castles, palm trees, and all these glorious roads scattered throughout. But none of that is our concern. We have left our village and we are here. We have been gifted this castle and we must prepare because rebellions start fairly quickly in this. The Byzantine Empire does start to crumble. We are already at war with several factions, six to begin with, and more will come as rebellions do spawn up. You can see, however, we do have 14,000 men, but that also includes the garrisons from our towns and castles, of which we have 54 castles, so a lot of defensive stuff in the Turkish mountains and on the border along the Danube. Our biggest opponent right now is definitely going to be the Sultan of Rum with their 7,500 soldiers. However, the Serbians and the Bulgarians to the north definitely do not hesitate to harass our lands. And our biggest, you know, our biggest problem is going to be covering this. You know, we're fighting a war all along here in the north, as well as, you know, big chunks over here. And Saladin and Cilicia and the Armenians might also come over over at some point as well to show me what for. Luckily, however, we do start off with some pretty good stats, so I'm going to go and do this and then show you the end result. Okay, so stats are all set up. I basically didn't really have enough focus points to go fully out, but we're basically, of course, making ourselves good at leadership because that way we can have more soldiers in our army. Uh, I've given myself as much HP as I can, and I've really specced out my character to lead the cavalry. Cavalry in this mod is insane. It is the cream of the crop. It's the creme de la creme. It's basically just really, really good. So I'm going to try and boost my stats in that right and pole arm are going to be my main focuses with leadership and maybe tactics to get the horde leader uh, and then even roguery roguery gives you more battle loot which is super nice sell that make plenty of money uh they're going to be our main focuses my brother or whoever this is my companion uh, again i'm going to spec him to be a real heavy focus on the infantry probably going to dismount him and let him just lead them he's got some really good bonuses especially for two-handers knocking people down as well as pole arm and knocking soldiers down 25 percent hit to knock someone off a horse is big and i think there's a few other ones up here as well so basically this guy is here as the cavalry smashes into my line a lot of them get hit off their horses because that has actually been increased quite heavily in this mod so there's not a bad chance he will be knocked off and again if i can just continue to level up his pole arm uh, my, my army should be able to deal with with oncoming cavalry charges because without this it's going to be a bit of a struggle and then finally, I also have my sister, who I was originally going to spec out to be a bit more of a, uh, a steward, but she doesn't really have any stats in that to begin with. And she's actually not bad at leading crossbows. So I might just armor her up and give her a crossbow or an up bow and just let her lead the archers. So with that, I think it's now time to actually go and recruit some soldiers. So the recruitment of In the Name of Jerusalem 2 is a little bit different. You don't recruit these soldiers like you do in vanilla, where you just kind of recruit the entire lines and each one is one soldier. So basically, when they're not in my army, they're working the fields, which is a really, really cool system. So basically, I have a set amount. You can see this number just below the unit, and that means how many of these I can recruit. Of course, my lower tier soldiers are going to be much easier to recruit, and there's more of them than, say, my heavy elite cavalry. Now, of course, you can improve this, and I'm sure later on down the line, they will implement ways like probably a building system in the village to go ahead and enhance the amount of elite soldiers you can get. But again, the, lower, the higher tiers are going to be pretty scarce, and the, the, the kind of weak, weaker units more more of the peasant rolls are going to be quite full so you can fill your army with elites but it's going to take a while to fill up and once they're dead they're dead or you can go for more of just kind of padding your numbers and that will give armies a kind of a nice variety of units themselves on top of that as well, units don't upgrade like they do in vanilla Bannerlord. You can see this tier 3 soldier is going to be my more elite infantry, but he doesn't upgrade into like a legendary knight or anything along them lines. He simply just goes to a better version of what he kind of initially is trained into. So again, he'll get better, he'll get better equipment, better armor and stuff, but he won't be able to become a cavalry. You're going to have to recruit specific cavalry, you know, who are made for that role to go ahead and fulfill that role, which is quite cool. And it also encourages as well getting mercenaries because you can only recruit from your own culture. So I can't go and get the best Ayubid Sultan units that just won't work. So let's maybe just pick up all our good infantry. We're going to, of course, pick up all our cavalry. You can also see it absolutely cost me nothing. 
uh, at least money-wise, uh, and you'll see what it costs in a second. Uh, and I guess we'll pick up some archers, we'll pick up some infantry, and as you can see, I'm picking up 30 soldiers, 27 of them from this village, and then boom, look down there. I've reduced the hearth of the village by 13.5. So by recruiting the soldiers, I've gone ahead and removed people working the farms, which has hurt the actual uh, viability, the economy of the city, which is such a cool feature. Again, the numbers, I think, are, are not balanced yet in this mod, as it's not released. I imagine later on down the line, they will balance it out so that maybe it costs more, it costs less, etc. Uh, but as of right now, it's not a massive hit to your hearth, but if you constantly recruit whenever they come back, it's gonna hurt. So now let's head to Constantinople and try our best to get as much food and water for the upcoming wars. Again, we are already at war, but as you can see, unfortunately, we don't actually have much influence and that's going to be obviously the main thing we need to kind of focus on at the moment is acquiring as much influence as possible so that we can form an army and actually get stuck into these wars. But let's for now go to the tavern. Also, it's not a bad idea to meet stuff. We also have a nice little Roman banner. Now, this isn't the best banner. Again, all the banners are customized. So you can see uh, our, 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 our emperor on the, on the seal itself. So this one is just decreased morale shock. Not really a great one. However, there's much better ones we're going to look to pick up, which is always going to be a, a real big boom. There's also some really cool kind of like slings and bolts and stuff that we can mess around with. Our main focus, though, is probably buying all of this water and then some decent uh, food. Again, food is pretty expensive. Luckily, Constantinople is a trade hub, so they make plenty of uh, of money that way. But also, not a bad idea to maybe pick up some, some saddled horses as well, just so we can kind of have more of that food. And we're, we're going to want to try and pick up a variety so we can increase our stewardship, which in turn will give us more men. We found our first battle just against 15 looters, so nothing too crazy. Of course, we're going to absolutely demolish this battle, but I wanted to show off a little bit of the combat. And oh no, we've also got the militia as well, but it'll be nice to see our troops for the first time actually in a battle just before we get stuck into our first battle hey and i want to let you know that this video is sponsored by war thunder the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made war thunder has over 2,000 tanks planes helicopters and ships spanning over a hundred years from the 1920s all the way up to present day every one of these 2,000 vehicles has an incredible level of detail down to their individual components. This coupled with the high level of customization and the ability to apply hundreds of camos and historical markings provides one epic experience. Hands down my favorite part of War Thunder is the intense PvP combined with operations seeing tanks planes and ships all duking it out well no other game can even come close play for free right now on pc xbox series x and s as well as playstation 5 and even previous gen consoles and when using my link in the description you'll gain a massive free bonus pack which includes several premium vehicles and a premium account boost so what are you waiting for play war thunder right now for free using the link in the description what i think is actually a custom map but i I don't think I've seen this before. Maybe it isn't, but it looks very custom and a very cool one at that. Sorry, it's dark. I thought I had the model that changed these settings, but I guess I don't. Uh, so let's go ahead and just set everybody up. We already have 18 cavalry, which is really nice. So of course, I will go and leave the cavalry, providing some decent bonuses, more melee damage. We will, of course, stick my brother in leading the infantry. He gives some great amount of damage to enemy infantry, damage to shielded infantry. Pikeman is always going to be useful. And then, of course, my sister can lead the missiles. She has some good bonuses. Let's dive into it and you guys can get a good little glimpse of the units that we are leading into a battle. So our Byzantine cavalry is going to be pretty brutal when it comes to engaging the enemy. Uh, I, I think we're going to mainly struggle with the Seljuk horse archers, but besides that, we should be pretty decent. I love all the flags attached, especially of my banner. And then when we get actually stuck into a proper battle, that'll be pretty awesome. We next have our infantry, a good mix of heavier shielded infantry with mail uh, and scales and then the other ones who are a little bit lighter just in padding so a good little variation and these will really come into clutch when we actually dive into battle itself we can also see the militia one of the actual really interesting things about militia in this mod and in this game is that because there is the lance recruitment which we've already explored there are actually some decent units in here the militia is made up of some of the lance recruitment so if the city hasn't been recruited from they're going to get a decent pull from them units and you can actually start to see some pretty high tier warriors uh, ready to fight i'll also as well just quickly show you 
how deadly cavalry is in this mod. Let's just lead a charge. I'll let the AI just go straight in. And uh, yeah, you're going to see a lot of green right there. We are using RBM as well for those of you interested. So the AI in bigger battles should really perform very nicely. Uh, but yeah, weapons are a big thing in this mod. Uh, you know, a, a, a puny sword like is going to just glaze off of like heavy scale and stuff. That's what it's designed to do. So you're not going to be doing a lot of damage. Whereas if you hit someone, you know, in plate with a, a big old blunt weapon, you're going to do lots more. It also matters where you hit them, whether it's the handle, the blade itself, the edge of the blade. If you're stabbing, you're more likely to get through mail. So all of that stuff is taken into account when it actually comes to the battles. Okay, so we do actually already have an army being raised by one of our leaders. I'm going to make my way up there. You can also see some of our lances have already replenished down in the left-hand side. One of the cool things about this mod is that there is a lot of information down here. You can see your party fatigue, which is something we haven't talked about yet, but we'll get on to into a second. You can see the, the number of caps as well. So actually, the cap of the amount of uh, soldiers I can get of a certain class is actually increased in one of my thieves, which is cool. Again, I'm not sure exactly how that works quite yet. I'm not sure if that system is implemented, whether they'll go with more a building system later on down the line or whatever but that's kind of cool that you can increase it and improve it and kind of maybe focus in on a certain type of unit our fatigue though is unfortunately dropping low so we are just gonna have to rest for a little bit the ai also has to abide by this they don't just completely ignore party fatigue and they'll always try and go back to friendly territory before they do rest you basically just have to kind of stay here for a couple minutes and it's a nice way of balancing these larger armies and stuff from not just going absolutely crazy so nice we're back up to 100 percent let's head up and try and catch up with our two armies in the north who are looking to send their forces against the bulgarians in the north and of course the serbians who are all the way over here god this 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 map is just so big and so good unfortunately though as i say that it has begun on the second day of summer 1187 alexis Ranos was obsessed by the burning passion of the throne. He won over his German allies and kinsmen and governors of the pr province of Achaelius, Constantinopolis, Statiosios. He entered the, uh, the great church and averted the Belisarius' unjust design, uh, put on the red uh, buskin, uh, proclaimed himself Belisarius by all troops. His armor is absolutely beautiful, but this first rebellion backed by the goddamn Germans, uh, has now erupted, and we are now deep in enemy territory. We need to be careful. If we are, yeah, our fatigue is luckily high, so we can escape out of here, but a, a rebellion has arisen, taking a fair chunk of our kingdom away, and obviously right on our border as well, so we need to be careful. I do want to try and make our way northwards, because we do have supporting armies, which I'm hoping will come back down south, and basically we just need to win some battles here, uh, as best as we can. Oh, and the events are flying. So due to the threat of the destruction of the pilgrimage routes caused by the barbaric behavior of uh, Reynold of Chatillon, uh, Sultan Saladin Yusuf began to launch a jihad. He wrote to his emirs and vassals, asking them to summon the army and start hostilities against the kingdom of Jerusalem. So again, if you've seen Kingdom of Heaven, you'll know exactly what has happened here. And uh, yeah, again, another beautiful event. I love how they're doing all the major historical stuff right here with these awesome looking events. So again, uh, a jihad has been called on Jerusalem. All I can say is good luck to the Crusaders. They struggle. They get pushed back behind the Jordan River pretty quickly. But maybe this time will be different and they'll be able to mount a, a solid defense. Oh, nice. I've actually managed to just capture a Bulgarian uh, caravan. However, Bands of Power Wise is very much in their excavator 30 cavalry. That's why. Okay, well, we'll take it on. You know, we'll see what they're made of. See just how strong cavalry is in this mod. Uh, again, we don't really have many severs right now, which is probably why Bands of Power is looking a rough good map for us though wow a really really good map for us so again um uh, something that in the name of jerusalem 2 is doing uh, it's good to kind of get this all out in the first episode so you guys have a good idea about everything but basically what this mod is doing is it's looking to implement a tile system much like in vanilla banner lord where every tile is represented with a similar looking battle map if i'm fighting in and around jerusalem it will be in the battle map in and around jerusalem not just a random desert map of course with a map this size it's going to take a long time to do but you'll notice it from now and now and again that'll be like oh that's exactly where we just were on the battle map which is very cool so again let me know if you guys notice them because sometimes i might even miss it so we're actually not that far behind when it comes to cavalry we have a decent amount uh, and our cavalry is good as well so what i might try and do they're going to split into two so what i might do 
is I might set my, my infantry like here with archers just above. Any incoming charges from behind should be a real struggle. And then I'm going to take our cavalry. We need to be careful because I don't want to get stuck into uh, their lines. They have a lot of archers down there which are going to hammer us. I want to almost try and bait the enemy in as best as I can. Are they going to meet me on the beaches maybe? Yeah, maybe I can just set up here. We'll be going downhill at them. I think this is not a bad little setup. So let's get our, our cavalry set up here. We're going to get ourselves into a skein, a good charging position. And we're going to bait. Oh, they're already coming. Okay, boys. Go, go, go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Charge them. Yeah, that's already one taken care of. Nice. I feel like we're much heavily armored than them. So, so far, not too bad. Yeah, they don't really look like they're that lightly armored. A bunch of caravan guards. There's a few elite soldiers in there. And they're very good at blocking, apparently. Nothing too crazy. Let's block ourselves there. Come around here, try and catch them. Good arrow volleys as well. Nice. The cavalry's doing a great job. I'm liking that a lot. Let's head back down again. Good. I distracted him. That cavalry came in and slaughtered. We love to see it. So far, so good. There's a few javelins coming in and other stuff from our archers. The other enemy cavalry is also approaching, I think. We do need to be a little bit careful. A few more horses there as well. Of course, another soldier down. He's actually an elite man. Oh, good damage right there. Knocking him down. Getting hit in return, but luckily his blade glanced off my weaponry. And you can see without speed, we really don't do that much damage to them. Okay, let's pull back again. I don't want to lose any of these men again. The less men I have to, to lose... The less I have to take away, away from the farms and other features. So let's fall back. We killed most of their cavalry here. Okay, we've managed to split their cavalry again. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to clear this section. Probably go for his horse there. Keep the shield up. And then we're going to just go into their battle line. I'm going to try and keep my infantry fairly safe if I can help it. Again, I don't want to lose them this early on until they've got maybe an easier chance to level up. And I mean, I say that. Maybe we do try and push them up over here. Yeah, let's get them here. Let's get them here. I and mean, let's try and approach them over that hill. We should be able to get fairly close. Come in here, hit him with our horse again. Knock him down. Try and get around there. Yeah, we definitely want to focus down the lightly armored guys as they have, they'll go. They'll go down in like one hit, whereas the more heavily armored, probably take a couple for us just to like, you know, get our lance fully lodged in. There you go. You can see again that knocking off a horse coming in clutch. And again, we're going to try and get back on, which makes some easy pickings. Okay. Infantry should be over here. Let's fall back with our cavalry now. We should have pretty much... Mo oh, they're, they're pushing? No, they're not. Okay, they're not, they're not, they're not. The enemy are just above that. Let's get our cavalry around the side and we're just going to get... Oh, they're already there. Okay, they're coming in. Okay, go, go, go. Cavalry charge. Let's just run through them. They must be out of ammo or something. Oh, no, their archers are sitting in ambush. Okay, not good. Let's go in, try and take them out. We want our cavalry to really focus these guys down. So I'm going to get the cavalry. Yeah, cavalry just run them down. Are the cavalry still following me? Oh, they might be actually. Yeah, they are. Cool. So I can actually leave the charge in. And the rest of the horses should cause mayhem. Yeah, look at that. Okay, nice. And we don't really have much. Let's just form up. Uh, we don't want to overcommit. Let's just get everybody nice and safe. We can, like, lose one soldier. We lost one Peltus in this entire battle. Cavalry can just charge now. They'll finish it off. Okay, I probably didn't have to be that close, but the Bands of Power Bar scared me. And I didn't want to miss out. Also, look, at, look how beautiful this is. Boah, smashed. And I didn't even break my lance as well. So you can't even break your lance in this. There you go. Boom. So now this spear is completely useless. Uh, but the interesting thing is about spears is you can't holster them. They're a two-handed weapon. So as soon as I pull out my secondary, boom, that spear is gone. So it's kind of designed to get that. And then you pull out your secondary and then get stuck in. Nice. A clean victory there. We ended up losing two of our... Are these infantry? I can never remember if these are infantry or our pelters. I think they might be our lower tier infantry. I guess we'll find out in a second. But good renown and good influence. Influence is important because that's what we need to build armies. Uh, we'll take all the prisoners as well. We're, we're pretty close to a supporting town. Uh, and then we'll start, of course, upgrading uh, money isn't really an issue in this mod you make some you make quite a good amount and because you're not really paying for your troop upkeep because of a lance system uh, you don't really have to worry too much about that so we're going to take all of that again some really good loot right off the bat uh, a don horse is that better or worse it's a little bit less hit points but faster kind of would prefer just a proper battle you also get a good sword as well does that look good uh, we'll take that for now, but we'll keep the spaffer on there if we need it. And then, yeah, just a bunch of loot. So we'll take it all. We're a little bit over encumbered, but luckily we should be in friendly territory. Uh, so let's go in. Um, and yeah, two of our two of our dudes did go down. So let's head. Where's the closest town? Up here. Yeah, let's head up here. Hopefully we can get here before anything precarious happens. We also need to rest as well. Our party fatigue is, is dwindling as well. Something you always have to keep track of because you find yourself in a very bad situation. 
Weapon wise, there's also a knife. I always love the way the knives look. So we'll keep one on us for, you know, last resort. Uh, and But we'll sell everything else for sure. Uh, and then, yeah, I mean, having a good bow, what we should do is, yeah, immediately set her up with a good bow. So there's a balance you a self bow. We're also going to get rid of our horse as well. Because, you know, she's going to be leading the missiles for now. Going to probably need to get her some, uh, some better stuff. We'll give her a shield as well. Love the quivers. I mean, armor-wise, do we have any better armor for her? Hey, boom. I mean, she already looks like she's good and ready for battle. I guess we could give her our spaffer for now if we're not going to use it. I mean, always just take it back if we need to. Yeah, I like that. She looks pretty badass and ready to lead the archers. I'm also going to get rid of his horse as well for now because, again, I want him to uh, I want him to lead the infantry. So we'll dismount him and uh, let him move in. We'll leave him with a spear, but everything else is fine. Uh, okay, so we also sold everything that we couldn't eat and we made a lot of money. Uh, is there any good gear we could pick up whilst we're here it doesn't look like it as of right now uh which is fine we'll make the 15k plenty of cash any good mercenaries oh some italian crossbows i think i'm happy to take them honestly and they're really cheap as well with the uh, i guess our bonus two cheaper crossbows it's always nice, nice to grab them we'll grab that hopefully that hasn't pushed us over our limit though uh no perfect actually and boom italian crossbows they have again some of the best bows in the game uh these crossbows are deadly and that's one of the really interesting things about this mob because uh, you can only recruit soldiers from your own culture unless it's mercenaries. Weapons are locked behind certain cultures and certain weapons. Like some cultures will have a specific weapon, which will be amazing, but you won't get access to. And the crossbow is one of those. I guess if you are playing as the Normans, uh, which are in the mod as well. I don't know if I've, I've shown that off, but the Normans are actually in the mod uh, all the way over here in the little boot of Italy along the Adriatic. And they do invade as well. You can already start to see they have a few of the Greek islands as well down here as Albania. Um, actually, they have, um, yeah, they, Albania's like here, right? They haven't quite pushed into Albania yet, but just in the north part. This provides for a really interesting gameplay. Let's go ahead and sell our prisoners. Is there anything else I would do with them? I don't think so. And uh, we also have a new companion as well. Again, this could be not a bad person to lead infantry, but I feel like our other character already has some really good stats. Like this guy has some pretty decent stats in pole arm and stuff. He's going to need some leveling up, of course, but now he's on foot. He should be able to get a lot of kills and level up that way. Oh, yeah. Something to look at as well whilst we're here is, are there any other uh, things we can do here? So quartermaster, I'm still the best. I'm still the best. I'm still the best. I'm still the best. Yeah, I'm the best in everything. So we'll just leave it as default uh, and that'll be, that'll be plenty. <clears throat> yeah, I definitely didn't just remove my horse instead of my companions, but let's not talk about that. Okay, so we've got an army in the north. Let's head over here. I'm not exactly sure what it's doing. We also have an army all the way up here looking to... Again, I'm not sure exactly what we're doing all the way up here, but let's make our way over to this force and see if we can maybe get stuck into it. Uh, again, we're going to be careful not to overcommit or anything. Uh, make sure our party fatigue isn't going to be dropping too low. So we'll camp probably at this crossroads. Oh yeah, they're sieging us here. Okay, so that's probably what it's about. Uh, so let's see if we can get nice and rested and then head our way over here. Again, look how cool some of the custom towns look like. Yeah, so with my men, we could possibly challenge it. We're, we're camping aside. I love that as well. Look how cool that is. We're camping just behind the river. So if I arrive, get fully uh, stocked up um, on fatigue so we don't overcommit. Uh, and then maybe we can push across this river with both our men. I mean, my soldiers... Yeah, we've got reinforcements on the way as well. We've got another army, another 165 men. So we should be able to save this siege. And again, they'll, they'll lose men trying to besiege the castle as well. So it should provide for a good battle. The, uh, the armies have arrived. Let's do this. Uh, and again, another really interesting thing. I want to make sure we wait until everybody else is in range before we engage. Boom. There you go. We can help out, get stuck in. But, oh my god, their dance of power bar is so good though still. And we even got the Emperor with us. The Emperor himself is here in all his golden armor. Beautiful. One thing I'll be sure to mention, though, is I also have the Battle Size mod on. So these battles, as of right now, it's not currently there. But these battles can go up to 2,000 soldiers on the battlefield at one time. That's pretty crazy, right? Um, uh, and again, it, oh my god, man. look at their horse archers! The Bulgarians! Oh my god. I will lead the charge into the river. Oh, that is so scary. We need to cross this river. We need to make a landing point. Uh, let's go. There's their leader as well. Talking. Oh, the arrow fire. And we're in the river as well. The Bulgarians have bested us this day. Let's just get stuck in. Hopefully, they're also getting in the river. will affect them. Wow, that's brutal. I'll just pause it quickly whilst I save this phone and finish my sentence. Is that the battles can get up to 2,000 men. This means that if one side is outnumbered 200 to 1,800 that's tough luck. All 1,800 soldiers from the enemy will spawn in and you'll be outnumbered 200 to 18, uh, 1,800. So that's just it. And again, that'll work against me and for me. 
Anyway, Bo, back to killing uh, Bulgarian horse archers who are just harassing the, the field. There are so many. Uh, and this is going to be some of the unique, like, kind of units you're going to be facing on the battlefield right there is the sheer amount of cavalry. Uh, so, yeah, let's, tr let's try and hold my infantry just, like, here along the riverbed. I don't want to overcommit them. My cavalry can fight to their heart's content, though. I think we have the armor advantage, and that will do me just fine. But I think everything else, yeah, we need to form up, let our archers do some good damage. They're completely behind me as well. Oh, that's so not good. That is so not good. Uh, yeah, I think we just need to cross. I think we need to cross and get away from them. Try and maybe bait them across the river. My cavalry and the, the supportive 40 cavalry are also going in. That's just, yeah, that's another kill. Oh, that's one of their leaders, I think, as well. Nice. Annoyingly, they're so lightly armored that it's hard to bring them down. You know, they're so fast. Like, when I, when I can hit them, we can knock them off very effectively. And we do damage to them very nicely. But it's catching them is the problem. Yeah, we definitely wanted to bring our force back across the river. So that we can utilize the, the river. Or slow them up, let our archers hit them. I mean, it's, it's going well. We are losing horses, but luckily we have the advantage to begin with. Oh, yes. Good damage. I almost actually killed my horse as well. We need to be very careful here. Very, very careful indeed. Because, yeah, we are killing them. But for everyone we kill, 10 more spawn. And it's an absolute massive ma mess. Uh, the infantry fight is also going on as well. Okay. I, oh, they're, they're charging into my line. No, my infantry. My archers. Yeah, my archers have been slaughtered. Wow. Even in the river, we're struggling. Good good kill on that. Yeah, I should have just stayed like in the riverbed in like a square formation. Oh, they're horse archers. Look at them pouring. Karahi, karahi. Uh, I mean, I'm going to go into them again. I mean, I'm pretty low when it comes to my horse HP. But we can't just sit here and get shot, right? I just don't really have the numbers to deal with this. That's why it'll be nice when I get enough influence to actually deal, deal with it myself, you know? I think that's my... Has my MC managed to make it out yet? Okay, my MC's trying to make it and run down, though. They're in shield ball, so they might survive. Yeah, we need to get a medic quickly as well. I think a medic will be a massive boom to our, to our survivability, you know? I want to make sure we keep this spear as well. Don't give it up. Bounce our shield off. Yeah, I mean, dealing with a horse arch is going to be the biggest problem. So we're going to we're gonna focus on that as much as we can. I mean, hopefully they'll be running low on ammunition soon. Oh, nice. I think we've pinned down their horse archers a little bit. Nice. They're dropping like flies. Good, good, good. We, I mean, we need it before they come flying in again. Maybe I can try and pick off one or two more. We need to also make sure the emperor doesn't die either. Yeah, we got one lone archer. Oh, it's my leader. Nice. Yeah, I mean, they're in heavier armor, so they are more likely to survive. One thing which I do wish was more frequent in battle lore battles would be that the AI does just run when it starts to get really hopeless. Like right now, the battle's 323. Yes, that cavalry was brutal, but come on, they're not going to win this battle where we have this many soldiers and the balance of power is this far in our favor. Like I wish the AI was just more proactive or just like retreating. And when they did retreat, they would actually be able to get away from the battle. Like it would give them an advantage uh, and maybe they would have the option to leave their, their wounded behind to give them that little extra speed. And there was a chance they could escape. Uh, I think that'd be quite cool and a nice addition. And maybe something they could even implement into this mod. Is that my sister? No, I gave her better armor, right? Yeah, I did. Wow, look at the battlefield, though. It looks brutal. Just look at this. Wow, that is so cool. That looks incredible. The flags on the riverbed. I mean, that was an insane battle. Okay, thank God for that. Victory is ours. I mean, what a hard-fought battle it was. You can see the men cheering in all their glory as the battle is, yeah, is taken. But yeah, we lost a lot of men. I lost a lot of men there. How many dead? Okay, only 19 actually dead. There's some really good soldiers among them. A lot of our infantry all leveled up, though, which I guess we have to take those. We have to take those. And we kept our northern borders safe. We got a prisoner or two, which, again, would be great influence. Uh, we've got some prisoners. And, yeah, a bunch of level ups. A bunch of level ups. So these guys level up. Again, the level ups aren't that great, but I'd rather have them than not, right? So I'd rather upgrade them uh, if we can. Uh, and then also upgrade, you know, as much as... Yeah, as many soldiers as we can, which is nice. Uh, we are right by a settlement, which is good. Annoyingly, we can't take their standards, which would be really good because 
they had some very good uh, stuff. You know, take decreased damage taken by range units, which is pretty nice, especially in siege battles. This is nice. So this one does pierce damage. So we'll give her that quiver. And you can see the different types of quivers as well. Uh, that was completely different to the last ones uh, that we had. No more armor for her, but we can also give her a knightly armored shield, which will give her a little bit more protection. So we'll take that. We'll take that. She also has some earrings on as well. Nice. Oh, some better body armor as well. Ah, uh, that's not really very Byzantine-esque though. Uh, so we will leave that. Uh, for now and we could also give her a spear but she'll just drop it so there's no need for that uh, okay cool that's fine we'll take the rest of the stuff to sell of course uh, we don't want to give that up even when we are making money i want to buy workshops in in constantinople and, and have a whole lot of fun uh, with that stuff so let's go into the city before anybody escapes um, and we'll drop off our prisoners. Also, we'll go here before anybody else can donate their prisoners. I mean, I won't be able to stick them in and miss out on my influence. Nice, 18 influence. That's good. We can already muster a fairly sizable army, and we get tons of charm for that as well. Nice. Okay, so let's take a look. So we can get uh, one renowned and influence for each res uh, issue resolved, plus one relation with a notable, or we gain more influence from battles. So this is interesting. So we have a few mods on, one of them being hold court that actually allows us to hold court and people come to us with uh, issues to resolve. So that could actually be quite a nice way of farming, uh, farming that type of stuff. But on the other hand, Warlord is also very good as well because if we have Warlord, we basically gain more influence. Like if we're gaining, say, five influence, it's 30% more. That much more? That's like an extra 1.5 influence? Probably not, right? I'd rather just get more renowned. So we'll take the top one. It's a weird one. I, I, I normally never, ever do that. But I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it this time. We also have another level up as well. So I'm going to stick another point in Poam. Just really get that going. And then I guess I'll stick another point in Stewardship as well. It's not bad. I wouldn't mind someone taking this roll over. Um, we can always respect later as well if we, if we really want to. And as you can see, our army is in tatters. So many wounded. And one of the nice things actually about this mod is units don't replenish ultra quickly as well. Unlike in vanilla where you get this entire army back immediately. Look how slowly we're replenishing. It takes time. Armies. Oh god, that was close. Uh, okay. Okay. Woo, good thing I was yeah. Let's we're gonna go this way. Good luck to y'all. Yeah, okay. We're gonna fall back. We need to try and make it back to friendly territory. Which is gonna be harder to do. Do we go a long way around? I'm tempted to, honestly. Go a long way around back to our settlement instead of going through the heart of the enemy position. Let's no, no. We need to get back home quickly. Um, before, uh, yeah, before we get overrun. Oh no! It continues. It continues. It continues. On the fifth day of summer, 1187, another rebellion has arisen. I think. Oh god, that was close. Uh, yeah, that's another one in the north. So we basically lost our entire northern border uh, against the Bulgarians, which is going to give them free reign to basically focus down these settlements. Now, I'm not sure if they automatically go to war with the rebellions as well. I guess we could find out, right? Zardom of Bulgaria, uh, and then you are just at war? Yeah, just at war with us for now. I'm hoping as the game progresses, they'll also end up fighting them. That could give us a little bit of an advantage. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to fall back. Yeah, I, should, I probably shouldn't triple speed. We should take things slow. I'm going to fall back. We're going to rest. We're going to sell whatever we have, uh, rebuild up a little bit. And then I think our first goal has to be to reclaim both these castles. They're reclaiming these castles. Uh, that will give us a nice little front line. Um, we can then look to either push the main city or, you know, push this final castle and then finally take the city and deal with this rebellion. Because as of right now, I mean, look how many we still have 32 wounded and we've traveled all that distance. It's crazy. It's awesome. I love it. But also it's like, oh, come on. <laughs> the ways that this mod does, because we're playing on 1.1.5, 1. 1. uh, we're not playing on 1.2 with Kingdom Destruction, which actually probably helped this mod out a lot because rebellion spawn and faction spawn uh, and that can all cause like, you know, issues and just like more entities on the map. But with 1.2, it, yeah, it implements Castle Destruction, which is really, really good for stuff like this because they can get rid of them. But this mod already does a pretty good job of that because you can only recruit from settlements you own. It's only the lance that is tied to you as a character and you as a lord. So factions that lose all their castles can't then just recruit soldiers, which is a good way of like, if you're winning a war, that shows you do start to win said war. Okay, let's upgrade this uh, milady with a much better... It's a short bow, so it's probably not as much range, but has a lot more pierce uh, and much better accuracy as well and better missile speed. So she should be able to fire off there. She's got, what, 23 decent arrows I and mean, then she can pull out her sword and shield. I kind of I kind of like having her as a support. I am definitely on the lookout for a, 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 a medic. That's going to be pretty vital for us, but... For now, that's fine. Oh, hell yeah. Look at that as well. A brand new cloak to go with her armor. That looks cool. I I'm digging that. I'm digging that. Yeah, nice. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely 
Uh, yeah, definitely take that. We also, again, we get so much loot. We need, like, more carry capacity, actually, uh, which is pretty interesting. Look up on water, and I actually do realize, yeah, we are pretty over our capacity because we did end up losing, um, we did end up losing a large amount uh, of our of our army who are wounded. They can't carry, so that does affect us. But I want to keep hold of these supplies. We'll go back and we'll probably replenish our army as much as we can again it's it's, it's annoying to do because i don't want to constantly do this um because again we'll, we'll just destroy our hearth of our settlements and they won't be making us money and that will obviously come back to bite us in the long run so let's rest up to 100 party fatigue not too bad there and then what i might do is wherever surrounding cities i might try and pick up some mercenaries yeah look how awesome this city looks as well a little bit of a uh, kind of you know lord issue there but they'll clean that stuff up yeah let's maybe go to a few of the cities over here in the north gives us time for our army to replenish we're in friendly territory so no need to worry about scary bandits or or looters or anything along them lines and let's see if we ever can get any mercenaries nice italian sailors are very good shock infantry i'll show you them right here so they're basically there's, there's several variants of them you get them with like big clubs heavy mail they have big axes great you know two-handed cleavers massive axes they're great to have in your back line uh supported by the rest of your forces so we'll take them and also we don't have to go ahead and take soldiers from our hearth to do that uh which is always always nice i'm also on the lookout as i see, look at this guy completely naked as well uh i am also on the lookout for a good medic that's something we're gonna want to try and pick up unfortunately no mercenaries here Okay, some Roman caravan guards, so a little bit more cavalry also. Wow, this guy would be a good infantry leader. Okay, wow, maybe we'll respec our companion. We take this guy on. He's Syro Arabian, but I don't think that matters that he's from the Sultanate. Uh, sorry, um, the Ayyubid Sultanate. He'd be a very good commander of our infantry. Yeah, let's take him. Let's take him. We'll probably end up respecking our brother. Or we could set up two infantry lines as well. How much is he? Yeah, he's super cheap. They haven't changed that yet, so we'll take that. We'll also take some caravan guard again, just to kind of fill out our numbers. Yeah, we're already up to full strength now. Okay, so we do need to armor him up and probably do his stats as well. Roman caravan guard. Yeah, they're not great. Do they have any good mail? Yeah, they're basically just wearing like padded overcoats and no mail. They have a spear though, and they just they, and they add numbers. They add numbers to our formation, uh, which is the most important thing. Uh, so let's go by tier. Sorry, let's go by type. Okay, nice. We've set it up. So, yeah, we got infantry, high tiers, then archers, then cavalry. Cool. I like it. You see, we have a lot of cavalry, but as I said, cavalry is king and these guys are beastly. I'm not sure if you can notice, though, as well, but look at the amount of sieges already being fired off. We're being sieged down here by the Armenians and the Sultan of Rum. Uh, we're being sieged in the north by a lot. Uh, and that's where that stuff is going to come in clutch. Constantine is up here. I think they're fighting. That's going to be a massive battle. Uh, we're not going to make it in time, but I guess we will look to head up there. Oh, yeah. Something I didn't even mention as well, that there is naval travel in the game. No naval battles as of quite yet, unfortunately. Um, but hopefully later on down the line, I have also heard rumors that, you know, naval travel might be coming to Bannerlord just in Manila. So that would obviously make this transition much easier. But they have custom ship models for all the, all the, all the, all the cultures, all the factions, uh, which again is a really, really cool bonus. Okay, so it does look like they won that battle. The armies uh, were victorious, uh, which is nice. So that's going to hold. The Northern Line is going to hold for now. Again, I really want to go and take some men and help defend these borders. I don't want to lose these lands to the Bulgarians, but I also want to deal with the traitors, and I'm not sure what's more important. We have enough influence. Let's see who we can take who's really close to us. So he's nearby, 13 influence, which is good. You're nearby. That's 30 influence, and they're right by me. Could take this... No, we're just too little to take our secondary army. Okay, so this should be enough. Well, that's like 400 men. And then what are we saying for these castles? So that's another 200. We'll rest up here as well. We're getting some good stewardship bonuses. Okay, we have 300 men. They have 300 defending that and 300 defending that. So if we can wait for the party to leave here... They have a party. Boom. Okay, that's good. No, we want to let him to leave and then try and siege the castle. Because if he leaves, then we can sneak in. And I only have 280, which is good. Uh, so we're going to do this again. Remember, like, if they have a good army in here or a good garrison, it's going to be brutal because uh, heavily armored soldiers are just king in this mod. And you can see as well, look how long it takes us to recruit here uh, and build up this. Uh, we're winning that as well, which is nice. Okay, let's just set this castle a siege and uh, prepare to uh, hopefully take the first castle in the war. I don't know why we're starting another war. Alexis, are you working for the enemy or something? I mean, it's a small kind of, I guess, new emerging faction, but I don't really want to fight more people. 
They can only have 1,600 men, but that's 1,600 men able to ravage our countryside. They also want to make peace with Cilicia, the Armenians? Yes. Okay, cool. I'm 100% for that. We could also spend a little bit of influence. We just don't have enough, but I need, I need enough influence to keep this army together. Yeah, I think we're going to go in now and just try and take this castle. We are, you know, we don't have the best numbers, but we have a siege tower, two, bat uh, two catapults as well. Annoyingly, this army is here, and we're going to probably try and take all the glory, even though they're all, they're all, <laughs> they're basically non-existent. Uh, okay, cool. We could also starve them out if we wanted to try and reduce this down. Might not be a bad idea. I'm a little bit wary of that. Yeah, we're not going to be able to, and I also don't want this army to join us, because if that AI army joins us... Um, they're going to be able to actually take over the siege and I won't be able to attack. So let's just leave the assault now. Hopefully it's daytime or at least dawn. I'm not going to be super dark because that would be, again, a gross battlefield. Okay, good. Yeah, I like this. I like this a lot. Uh, so again, not all, some of the settlements have been changed. Many of them haven't. So again, you have to kind of just rock with it, roll with it. Um, and, it, you know, it is what it is. So I guess let's just split up our commanders. Make sure we have people who have very good stats. Yeah, that's one of the other dudes I have now. Nice. Because we want my companions leading the soldiers into battle. Because if they do that, then they're going to be more likely to level up as well. Uh, which should be nice. So yeah, I guess we'll stick with this uh, siege tower. That's going to be our best option of breaking through the enemy line. Archers are already scattering the fields. And our men should be making our, their way over uh, to, the, uh, yeah, to the ladders. And luckily in these mods, even though we have a siege tower, the soldiers still do push up as well. Uh, which is nice. Oh, this is actually a different castle than I thought it was. I thought it was the castle uh, with the little side passage here. Maybe this is a bit of a custom castle. I don't know. It looks different like they've edited it, but maybe it's just the, oh, it's the lower tier version of that castle. Okay. Yeah, nice. I take that. I take that. So the boys are already pushing up. We do need more infantry up here. Yeah, they're coming over now, which is good. Uh, everybody should be in line as well. Yeah, everybody's in line, which is fine. I'm not going to make my way up yet because we will just get slaughtered. That looks cool as well. Look at their marches just over there. Look at that on the on the battlements there. It's very cool indeed. Our trebuchets aren't shooting as well, annoyingly. Some of our archers being hammered. Okay, I'm going to pull out my sword. There's no reason to have that. And we're going to try and fight our way up. Again, it's, it's in these uh, mirror matches, it is kind of hard to know who's who. Because, of course, we're both using the same, same soldiers. You can see these sieges are pretty hard to breach. But our standard is going up. I am making my way up as well. And we just... Oh, my God, there's a lot of them. I was hoping for a few less, honestly. Oh, our spears are brutal. Let's try and make our way down to this left-hand side. If I can get access to them fire pots, keep that shield up. Okay, how we're, we're pretty low. But if I can get access to these fire pots, I can really open up the breach. Oh, that's what we like to see. We need to be careful not to get hit by the missiles. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. We're going to keep this up. This is exactly how you win a siege battle. The arrow fire over there is a little bit scary. I mean, if this can't make a big enough breach, then I don't know what will. We're also getting some really good throwing uh, stats as well. Make sure the AI gets off of us. Just kind of... No, oh, they're coming over to me now. No, go away! Okay, this isn't good. Let them in. Okay, that's one dead. We're taking a lot of damage, though. We are also drawing men away. So let's just do this. Let's just draw them away. Get up here. Maybe even... Oh, there's so many of them as well. Wow. Look, we are drawing men away. I don't know what the AI is up to, but... Oh, God. Arrow, 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 arrow. Okay, good. Let's just avoid that. There's arrows up there as well. Can we jump down? I wouldn't mind coming back down. So avoid the arrow fire. Get to our safety down here, I think. Oh, there's all arrows. There's all archers. Fall back, fall back. Okay, they're falling back. I have it. Okay, yeah. We went down. We went down. Kind of expected it. Uh, that to happen that way. Let's make our way over to the other ladder. See if we can help out. The artillery is now firing, which is cool. They're holding this siege mode pretty nice. We're going to get up here and, uh, yeah, get our sword bloody clear the arrow towers. There's a lot of them. The arrows are flying. Wow. Okay, yeah, let's definitely get over here and try and clear out one of these archer towers. And the nice thing is as well, look, look how little damage he does with that puny dagger. If he was trust stabbing, he'd do way more. We can help clear these guys up, get some experience on our companions. Okay, the boys are running through now. Yeah, we are storming the castle, clearing out anybody in our path. The walls have fallen. Which is always going to basically dictate the end of the battle. Look how many archers are up here. Wow. Imagine just having a, a whole line of Italian uh, arbalists up here. The Italian crossbow wound would just be brutal. Let's take them down. 
keep that shield up. Let me just crouch as well, take a few hits. Try and stab him in the face. Oh. Yeah, luckily the arrows aren't really getting through my mail right now. They kind of need heavier piercing arrows, like a better, more composite bow. And also, like, you do it, like, again, don't just think I'm, like, invincible. If I get hit by a, a blunt weapon, or just getting hit by, like, them arrows as well, it's, it's death by a thousand cuts with these lower tier guys. They don't, they don't really do the damage, but then you might get hit by a big mace and then just all of a sudden take 70 damage. So it really does wrap up. And yeah, even though it does feel like I'm, I'm pretty safe, I am like, you know, a rich lord. So I like it. I think I think balancing in battle is actually really well done for a lot of the items, uh, which is always cool. And there you go. The settlement has been taken. The soldiers are running uh, across it. Hopefully a, 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 a loyalist, uh, loyalist Byzantine flag will be risen. Okay, boom. We managed to get nine kills, which I'm happy with. Yeah, nine kills, a lot of throwing with them fire pots. That's how you clear out a goddamn siege. Uh, Imad, the swordsman, got a kill. We need to give him better equipment. Uh, Maria, who's my sister, got three. And I think our other companion got 13, which again is, is, is good. Uh, hopefully, there's some improvement to their stats. We got a lot of loot as well. Uh, we could recruit looters to try and boost our roguery. Again, it's just free troops. Like, it's free troops to throw away. And by commanding them cyber soldiers in our army, you actually do get roguery experience, which just equates to more loot. So, I'll take it. Take the prisoners, of course, as well. And a bunch of amazing loot. I love it. I love it. Were we going to do anything? I don't know if we were going to... Yeah, we're going to give him some better equipment. Again, it's going to take us a little while to fully outfit him. Um, can give him an axe? A sword is... We need, like, can I give him a mace? Wouldn't be a bad idea. We'll take 30 water as well. It's nice. I guess we'll give him a bow as well. He can just wield a bow whilst he's waiting for combat. And then like a sword. Yeah, sword and shield as well. Uh, we'll just give him a bow. He can level that up, that up a little bit um, as we wait. So that's pierce damage. Yeah, that's less arrows, but more damage. Yeah, we'll just take a Roman quiver. And he has his bow as well on his side. Yeah, we'll take that. We'll take that for now. And then, yeah, we'll, we'll try and get him better armor as we uh, as we go back to a shop or something. Because we have plenty of... Uh, back to a shop. Back to town. We have plenty of equipment to uh, to utilize there. Unfortunately, you can't pillage a, a friendly settlement. A, a settlement of your culture, even though they rebelled against us. Uh, so we do just have to not loot the settlement, uh, which is always a shame. But we will make sure we give off our uh, prisoners for a little bit more influence. Up to 70 influence now. Nice. That's big. And boom, just like that, we've taken back another settlement. Our allies to the west have taken that back. We're currently besieging their main settlement with the Emperor's main army. However, whilst we're doing this, we are, of course, losing ground to the Bulgarians. I imagine it's only a matter of time until the Ser Serbians probably push on Belgrade in the north. The Normans are taking full advantage of this by invading along our border. And, I mean, luckily, with peace with the Armenians, don't know how long that peace is going to last, but it is. That reduces one enemy, and the Seljuks are coming down. Uh, we also have a... Is this another rebellion? No, this is Cyprus. Yeah, and the, the, the warriors in Cyprus have come across and also taken a castle on the mainland. But don't worry, their time will come. So there we have it. That is going to be the first episode in this brand new series. If you enjoyed it and you're excited to see more, please drop a like and a comment down below. Honestly, it helps out the channel so goddamn much and I really, really do appreciate it. So thank you to everybody who's checked out this video and I'll see you guys in part two. Once again, I want to go ahead and give a massive thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Be sure to go ahead and download War Thunder using the link in the description to unlock your massive bonus pack which includes bonus vehicles boosters and much more